Paul will come over sometimes because Paul doesn't have a computer. Or I think he's computer illiterate. <laughs> and he'll come over and so, and we'll, we'll plug on and we'll see like if people like the show or not. And it's kind of fun, you know, see if people sort of dug last night's episode because a lot of times we didn't get to see it. And, uh, and I haven't even seen a final cut of it sometimes. Like a few of the shows I still haven't seen final cuts. So I'm interested if it was any good or not. Usually my, my mother calls me and tells me, but it's, it's sometimes interesting to check in and see what other people think. You know, you, you learn how to act when you're, you're doing a play, usually, and like you're, you do the scene and like the audience, you can tell whether they're kind of into it or not, or they think you stink. You just know, it's immediate. With, with television, you, you just shoot all these little scenes and you have no concept of, of, of if anyone's watching the show. And I think the shows are for you guys. I mean, that's who we make it for. So to hear what you think about it, as opposed to like what some reviewer from the Los Angeles Times thinks about it, I'm much more interested in what you have to say about it. <laughs> yeah, we do that a lot. Uh, some of the stuff, we'd be playing the scene and we just wanted to like, do more with it. And it's not really even stuff that really has a huge amount of like information as far as moving the story along, but what it does move along, it moves the relationship between these two guys along. And television I like to watch is, is the kind where there's an interesting story, but it is all about the relationships. And Paul and I sort of threw some things in, and um, you know, as long as we don't abuse it too much, they're sort of open to that. And uh, and what I feel really honored about that is that it, it makes the environment so creative because it's not just like you have to walk out there and go boom, 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 hit your mark, say the line. Something can happen like in the moment and you can respond to it. And I don't mean just like in a look, you can actually verbally respond to it and sometimes it ends up in the show. And you know, what's great about that is, is our executive producer, David Levinson. Um, you know, I don't think a lot of executive producers would be so cool with that, but you know, he, if he doesn't like it, he doesn't have to use it, you know? Literally every every scene Paul and I do, it it's there's there's like ten percent improvised. And sometimes like what we like to do is if there's something that, that doesn't ring truthful in the scene, um, if you can just say it, if you sort of just cop to it. Because like we can feel it when we're in the scene. You can feel like you know Shannon got or Shannon's the keeper. She got here awfully quick with that shot of counter agent. How did she know I was here? Like, we'll, we'll be talking about that before the shot. And then if she enters the frame and you're like, wow, you sure got here quick. All of a sudden it sort of diffuses the phony aspect of it and sort of lends itself to the tone of the show, I think, in a way. Silverus. I suck as an actor. It's me. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. I mean, there are, are obvious parts that, that aren't similar to me, but the core of, of Darian is embarrassingly similar to me. I mean, I watch some of this stuff and I'm like, man, you're supposed to do that stuff like when you're hanging out with your family and like friends, not like on TV. <laughs> I mean, I, I think like the more goobery parts of Darian, that's 100% me. The like cool guy Darian, uh, that's sort of the fantasy of me. And then the rage Darian is uh, similar to me. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I'm real. I mean, it's, it's, it's a really good question. And I, I think about it a lot. Uh, I wish that he, I wish I had more time to make him less similar like than me, but because you have to do it so quick, uh, a lot of times you'll be like, well, what would I do in that situation? And then you just do it that way simply because you don't have the time to like do a ton of like character work. <laughs> That's how I got the part, I have to be honest. I think uh, I've had a really good life, and so I can't really tell you where it came from, but I, I do have a certain amount of uh, rage. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think everyone has it.
it's just some people it's a little more um, at the surface for some reason and uh, I used to not like it but in a sense it's oddly turned out to be my gift in a way I was you know going to yoga class and like going to church trying to like get rid of it and then all of a sudden I read this script and I was like oh, this is great I mean I read it to me it read you know archetypically like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and I was like I get that a lot I'm, I don't I understand Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde I mean I think everybody doesn't get to explore it as much and what's great is this character I mean this character is that's that's who he is it's the duality of man good bad what, what are you going to do with it? Night Owl 03, uh, easily the most embarrassing things for me to do are uh, some of the effect shots, simply because I have to wear uh, a red leotard that is uh, very form-fitting, and then they, they also uh, put a wig on me that is supposed to look like my hair, and I hope it doesn't, but everyone says it's similar, that, that's red as well, and the wig is just huge, and then I, I look like a big red Gumby and I like have to run around and like pretend I'm not embarrassed but that is hands down the most uh, embarrassing and humiliating part of the show for me.